Hey, welcome back to a Dunyan episode with your host Bento. I'm taking you through the vortex of storm hard mode as the beer shaman. I will teach the basic and useful things for this Dunyan to you. So the most important things when it comes to this Dunyan is for the tanks. The tanks are the only one who actually need some special AA perk for this mission. They need the resolve AA. That's used when the boss uses a thing called lighter than air that you will see further into this video. It's very important to use that one or you're most likely gonna fail this. You're gonna have two tank at this boss, one will be at the boss and the other one will kiting the ads around here at the stairs. And to activate hard mode, one of those have to go and talk to the one of those adepts the water or air. The main tank pulls the boss to him while the off tanks is taking ads and he's gonna move them around here on the stairs. Most commonly the ad puller want to run through the normal group that we are fighting this uh, boss here. So as always when I'm playing this beer shaman I'm using crush armor to reduce the enemy's armor of course which will make our whole group hit a lot more with their weapons. This thing he calls called cat the typhoon the blue one keep out of that if you get stuck in that one for too long you will get teleported up to a place where you have to run down very carefully if you get teleported up there so try to keep away from the typhoon either go out like i'm doing right now or you can sidestep sidestep out of it with double tapping your movement keys now we see it's causing another typhoon. I'm using the rune of aggression with the beer shaman as well because the rune of aggression will buff up the entire team's weapon damage. Now it's using the lighter than air and that means the tank have to use his resolve AA perk. And lowering his armor again with crush armor, stealing some mana for our team with ether theft. And keep in mind this tornado is going on as well. As long as they are not too fast you can uh, try to evade them but they, if they are really fast you can most commonly stay and just wait for them because if they move fast they won't damage you so much but if it's a really slow one you're gonna stay there for so long and it's gonna damage you tons and you see the eruption ability as well there you get knocked back the way you get knocked back is where you're facing with your back, so keep in mind that this is done since the water in the middle is dangerous. If you get stuck there and walk there or later, you're gonna get damage over time, which means the most common thing that you will result in the death. So never ever face your back at the water. This is casting eruption now as well, but of course, as long as you keep in mind his casting bar is most commonly safe to face your back anywhere but always try to not face your back to the water and don't face your back outside of these stairs as well because if you get outside of these stairs on the floor outside you will also get damaged over time just like you do in the water so when it gets really thin since the water is rising on this dunion don't Go too close to the edge and face your back outside or at the water. Try to face it like I'm doing now, or even more straight. So he's doing another eruption there. People get thrown back. And since we have also lost one of our tanks, one of our guys have to take over the responsibility of the ads, and it's gonna be the necromancer who's doing a great, great job. Great intention is to take up. I'm using this Ursine Brawl as well. If you're playing as the beer shaman, Use this as much as you can because it reduces the chance for the bosses or any enemy at all to hit you and it still deals nice amount of damage. Because you make them miss their hits which will result that the tank will have a lot more health. It's almost like saying you're healing because they ain't losing that HP that they could have lost. So it can be very crucial to use that thing. There I'm avoiding that again, the eruption. This internal bead, like I said in the episode before, use that in combination with various of different manifestation, because a different manifestation affects the internal bleed in different ways. It can be output tons of damage or make some resistance. Do you see? I failed there, I come back from when I get teleported up from one of those typhoons. 
and I get the eruption and get kicked down the water you see I lost tons of health if you watch that so keep that in mind Now when I get back I try to lower his armor again and put on some dot d damage on him. Crush his armor. Using rune of aggression again to do more damage. But it was not so good positioning there because we're not hitting the boss at the moment. He's still on for 40 seconds more so we got some nice extra damage with that as well. And keep in mind if you're gonna see the casting bar on the boss and those you have to target them else you can't see the casting bars. One thing that's very fun in this game if you want to play a healer like the bear shaman or any one of the healers actually is that you will still be able to output tons of damage in this game. The reason I choose bear shaman is because I'm more of a melee person. I'm not I'm not the caster person. I that I can definitely confess. Sometimes I can play casters in games, but mainly I'm always playing the melee classes. And since there is a healer which are melee Whoa, that's so great. I just love it. And we are actually soon beating this boss, because when you reach 10% of health on him, you have defeated him. Then the Vortex hard mode will be completed when we have done our job. Even though we lost one of our followers here, Cleed, one of the conquerors, we can still keep going. But keep in mind if you have conquerors in your group, they have one ability which they can rest the wounded in combat, but they got a kinda long cooldown as well. So we have defeated the boss and the only thing left to do is to destroy this powerful chest. It's almost impossible to destroy it. Now I'm just kidding with you guys. But uh, they have rest our little conquer friend, we kill in this chest and after you destroy this chest there will be an epic chest that you can loot with one epic gear and some random blue ones like in normal and also some nice tokens as well. So we have finished the dungeon, now it's only left to loot. So considering we lost the guy I must say it really went good. You see my inventory is really full and this dungeon, if you can do this dungeon in hard mode, don't do it in normal mode. Because if you do this hard mode you always have a chance to get a nice epic. But keep in mind though that you can't get all of the epics and kitai in the same dungeon. You have to do other dungeons to get the gear you want. And to find that out, I will also put a link, link in the description to various of gear and kitai. I think it's called Asia Kona is better than the gear. But anyway guys, it was fun time showing you Vortex Storm and I hope to see an upcoming Dunny episodes as well. Hope you had a great time, I had a great time showing you. See you guys, take care, cheers, this is Banto, goodbye, follow me if you wanna leave.